look da. The tree's wach. Do you think this is My lord, till next our streams cross. To understand the spell which binds Walius, he must first know who we are and what drove my forebears to commit such an atrocity. This tapestry is our story, the one that brought us here. After generations of wandering, my people sought refuge in Northeastern Storm some 170 years ago. But in exchange for our safety, the Gregorian Church demanded we renounce our faith and branded us heretics when we could not. To be exterminated as a lesson to others. And so was it chronicled in the Imperial Histories for anything less would have made the church seem weak, yet a handful survived. The few who did fled north and west, and in doing so discovered two things that would forever shape our fates. The first was an old legend revealing how to make your very own Mother Crystal. I've heard that one before. Yes, yet it gave them new hope, however false. Our ancestors convinced themselves that they could recreate the Divine if they could only find a strong enough heart. A living being capable of channeling torrents of ether. And the heavens provided. A dominant warriors. They'd stumbled across a nostrum in an ancient ruin, which they believed could provoke a sudden outpouring of a creature's ether. They meant to enrage his icon. Leviathan would have destroyed everything had our people not made their second important discovery. A means to stop time itself. Where did they find that? The Northerners had no such magic, so they would have used them. When our ancestors first arrived, the land was uninhabited, save for an old witch who lived on the highest peak. Her body had been consumed by the curse, a cruel payment for her long years of service to the Northern Thanes. So desperate were they to prevent the fall of Drake's eye, they'd forced her to devise a spell to stop time. But Drake's eye did fall. It did. When she finally perfected the necessary magics, it was already too late. As punishment for her failure, the Thanes exiled her to this forsaken place to live out the few days she had left. Knowing her suffering, our ancestors cared for her as best they could, and in return, she gifted them her spell. That even though she should die, her legacy might live on. So armed with both the knowledge of the ancients and the secrets of time, our ancestors settled upon an ambitious plan. They would create a new Mother Crystal and enchant it that it might endure for all eternity. Thus would our people's wandering, our suffering, finally end and prosperity visit us once more. And all it would require was the sacrifice of a single child. A small price to pay, or so they believed. Another victim of man's blind reliance on the Mother Crystals. So we know the seal source. How do we break it and restore the flow of time? Do you recall the Dome of Light on top of the cliffs to the west? Inside lie the ruins of an old temple. It was there that the witch built the Vare, a conduit of sorts that channels her remaining ether into the Surge. 
but it's been a long time since anyone set foot in the place. And now, there are others who claim it as their own. Then we shall go prepared for a fight. That said, it may be best if one of us stays behind. You think the village could be in danger? We saw the ether flow from Wallius in all directions, but only encountered a single familiar. There will be more. And should even one make its way here, I doubt the walls could hold it back for long. Then I shall stay. The Phoenix will see your people safe, tributary. You have my thanks. Very well. We should depart at once. I fear time may no longer be a luxury we can afford. The Vare is not easy to find. We must first head north, and then west, deeper into the forest. I suspect two dominants can handle whatever it is that awaits you atop that peak. And if not, there's always Lady Shula's battle axe. I suspect two dominants can handle whatever it is that awaits you. My lord. Long, long ago. And so we wandered. But never did we settle in any one place. Their cullings came close to staying our river's course. The first was the Duskan Heart. Second was the means to stop time. And for her failure, they exiled her here. The rest, you know. Not that it could ever have succeeded. Eighty years have come and gone. The plan was simple. Sadly for them, And yet... It was the tributary of the time. Naturally. And they pardoned him. streams cross. Oh, I never should have let him go alone. Ty, take me, what am I gonna do? You! You've got to help me. Shula said you were a force to be reckoned with, are you? Uh, why do you ask? Hey? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I should explain. My name's Kitav. I'm worried about a friend of mine. He went into the forest and he hasn't come back. Would you help me find him? 
Oh. Sorry. Uh, you're right. It's not for outsiders to solve our problems for us. You. Hey, I'm with. I can try. Tell me what I need to know. Of course. Uh. You know about the glamour our ancestors cast to keep this place hidden, right? Shula told us about it, yes. Right. So you know the cairns we use to maintain the spell? Well, it's me and my friend's job to maintain them. If it weren't for the likes of us, it would have faded years ago. So your friend went into the forest to visit one of these cairns? Aye, that's right. He said he was going down to Father's Fell. There are two cairns out that way, one by the banks of the Swift Run, and another near the Winged Wains, the, uh, ships in the forest. All right. How will I know this friend of yours? His name's Nasef. He's about my height, but clean-shaven. If you could track him down and see that he's come to no harm, I'd be much obliged. I'll search the village, just in case anyone's seen him, and meet you back here. Very well. One came by the ships, another by the river. Better get moving. Hail, stranger. Are you a rider by any chance? I am. What gave me away? Oh, I can smell it on you. The scent of the stables. And not just any stables. Something tells me you've never been one to ride half starved birds with chine gall and wet beak. If I had a guess, I'd say your bird eats only the finest greens and has her feathers groomed twice a day with a curl hairbrush. <laughs> Nothing but the best for my Ambrosia. Ambrosia, eh? Pretty name. What's she like? Well, she's tall and strong. And her feathers are as white as snow. You're joking. You've got a white chocobo. I have, yes. I suppose they are rather rare. This I've got to see. Can you bring her here? What? Are you scared she'll never want to leave? Come on. Are you... I... Oh, and if I... <laughs> well, you... I... I would if I could, but I doubt Shula's skiff could hold her. Me dad's got a boat, and he's very chocobos before. You could get him to bring her. It'd be perfect timing and all. He's preparing for a trip beyond the wall as we speak. I'm sure he'd help you if you asked. He would. Well, I don't suppose it would hurt to have Ambrosia around. All right then. Where could I find your father? He'll be in the storehouse on the other side of the brook. Tell him Manda sent you. <laughs> Me dad'll be in the storehouse across the brook checking our stocks. He'll help you ferry your bird across the bay. Me dad'll be in the storehouse the brook checking our stocks. And what are you two drawing? My lord, may I speak with you a moment? There is a matter with which I would beg your aid. Of course, what is it? Please, not so loud. Something serious, then? Yes. I think we might have company. I was passing by the low gate when I saw a figure moving among the trees upon the cloak. At first, I thought it must have been you or your brother, so I didn't say anything, but... But the more I think about it, the more certain I am that the figure looked familiar. 
Then you're sure it wasn't one of the other villagers? Positive. I think it was someone from outside the wall who has found his way inside. Of course, it could just be my imagination playing tricks on me. I only caught a fleeting glimpse, and it might have been you or your brother. But if it is who I think it is, we cannot allow him to leave now that he knows we're here. Would you go and see? Oh, he won't try to hurt you, believe me. Given what lurks in the forest, the only one likely to get hurt is him. Oh, forgive my impertinence. Of course. Yeah. But, but, but it would. Very well. Whether the man you saw is who you believe him to be or not, we need to know. It may yet be someone else entirely. Someone who means your people, or my people, harm. Perhaps. Just promise me that if you do find someone up there... Don't worry. I won't draw my sword unless I need to. Thank you. Yamila, this man you saw. Might he be the customer you told me of? I fear so. The customer? I'll explain later. Come on. The figure I saw was about halfway up the cloak. That's our name for the mountain you crossed to get here. The figure I saw was about halfway up the cliff. If we pick too many of the flowers, there won't be. Yes? Flawless. Till next time, then. I can't. I can't go on like this. Don't say that. <coughs> Just <coughs> try to breathe. That's it. Is everything all right? Ah, you're the outsider. I'm Fanit. Healer by trade. And this is Talor, <coughs> one of my patients. He took ill not long after you arrived. Nothing too serious, I hope. I hope so too, but... But? This affliction, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. He complains of feeling chilled to the bone, but there's no fever to go with it. And my most powerful Antalgic hasn't done a thing to ease the pain in his chest. I'm starting to wonder if his condition might require a different kind of treatment altogether. Shula said that you were here to help us. You couldn't help me, could you? I'm sorry, I know Shula didn't invite you here for this, but if you find the time... I'd be happy to, if I can. You can, don't worry. All I need you to do is speak to Talor's son, Pavat, over at the forge, and ask if he knows what his father was up to before he came down sick. Something must have caused this, and I want to find out what. The trouble is, Talor's too weak to speak, and I can't leave his side for long. So while you talk to Bavat, I'll pay his wife word a quick visit, just in case she knows anything. All right. Oh, uh, do you need something? I do, though not from the forge. Fanit asked me to speak with you. She's looking into the cause of your father's illness and 
Wondered if you could shed any light on the matter. I see. Sorry. She shouldn't have dragged you into this. It's no trouble, really. Tell me, did your father do anything out of the ordinary before he fell ill? Not that I know of. But then I hardly see him. He's always out and about, like. Well, at least he was. Suppose he might have been a bit more... fidgety than usual, but apart from that... When you say out and about, where does he usually go? Just round the village. Wanders over to Blazia's place most days. He's a fisher who lives on the other side of the fount. They're old friends. Maybe he knows something I don't. Maybe. I'll go and speak with him. What is it you want? A good tide to you. You one of the outsiders, then? I am. Shula invited me. Are you Manda's father? I am. <laughs> Got you running errands for her already, has she? She's asked to see my chocobo, but I need your help and your boat to bring her here. <sighs> or you could just say it no. Honestly, that girl and her birds shall be growing feathers soon enough. Well, truth be told, I didn't take the idea seriously at first. But thinking about it, it would make it easier to get around if I had Ambrosia here. Can you help? Well, if you're sure that's what you want. The tributary says where to treat you lot as we would each other. So if you need me to ferry your bird over, then that's what I'll do. Still, they don't take the water easily. I'll need you to bring us a mimic gourd or two to keep her calm on the journey over. And uh, where would I find one of those? Oh, don't ask me. It's been years since I last brought a chocobo across the bay, and I'm told the world's changed a fair bit since then. Where do you usually get your stable supplies from? Well, the man who made Ambrosius tack lived in Martha's Rest, and if I remember correctly, he traded in chocobo feed too. So I suppose I'll go and ask him. I'll be sailing over to Northreach soon to pick up some supplies. While I do that, you collect your bird and your gourd, and then meet me by the shore. Just don't take too long, all right? It's a mimic gourd you need, or your bird will panic as soon as the first wave hits. Bring both to the shore near Northreach, and leave the rest to me. It's a mimic gourd you need, or your bird will... It wasn't a relief to see the better part of the Guardians finally. You look like you could do with a drink. When I was a little girl. My grandmother. I swore then and there. Wind right up as and thank goodness they did. Like being back in the glory days. Half of me wishes they hadn't left. It ain't exactly a bed of roses.
And that's just the start. You come back and visit, all right? I remember you. You're the one who saved Whiteheart. How's the old girl doing? She's very well. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. You're the one who saved her. Anyway, what brings you to the rest today? I was hoping to purchase a Mimit Gourd. And I thought you might be able to tell me where I could find one. Oh, reckon I could do better than that. Just so happens, I've got a whole carload of the blasted things. Not a buyer in sight. Really? Aye, you'd be doing me a favor taking a few off my hands before they turn to mush. But just be on the lookout for wild birds, eh? Don't want them chasing after you like they did me. <laughs> I will. And thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Any friend of Whiteheart is a friend of mine. And in times like these, friends have got to stick together. We certainly do. Northridge, then. Wouldn't want to keep Ender's father waiting. <sighs> Founder only knows what I'm gonna do with all these gourds. Hmm. Hollow them out and make lanterns, maybe. <sighs> Founder only knows. And now my eye help the garrison today. I told the dame I would take the largest residence in Northridge, yet she outright refused my coin. Some nonsense about having enough space for everyone. Ugh. I told the dame I would take the largest residence in Northridge. Carla, the dame needn't worry. I am a man of my word, and I fully intend to keep it. So overzealous was I in my desire to see the Empire restored that I lost sight of what was truly important. The citizenry. Carla, the day... This must be Ambrosia, was it? Oh, she's a real beauty, isn't she? I have the mimic or two. Here.
Thank you kindly. As soon as she's gobbled this up, we'll set sail. We're going to take a little trip across the bay now, Ambrosia. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Well, we made it. You did and all? <laughs> she is as white as snow. You're beautiful, aren't you, girl? Brave, too. She was calm as you like on the journey over. The mimic gourd will have played its part, of course, but passing through the walls enough to spook most birds even then. Not this one, though. Ambrosia's been through a lot. I doubt there's much that could unnerve her now. Not with a beloved master by her side. No. It's you who looks after me, isn't it, girl? Anyway, thanks for bringing her here. I hope I can breed a bird like her someday. And if you and Ambrosia need ferrying back to Northreach, you only need say the word. Thank you. But I think we might explore Missidia together. What do you say, Ambrosia? Braver man than me taking a stroll through those woods. I'll be sticking at this end of the village, thank you very much. We're a braver man than me taking a stroll through those woods. I'll be of the arbor. Perfume from San Bragg. Looks expensive too. Who's there? Stop! All right, I'm saved. Oh, I could kiss you. Maybe you should introduce yourself first. Hervey, 
I knew it was you. What are you doing here? I came to see you. Oh, my little canary, it's been so long. Thank you for saving him and sparing him. Who is he? Hervey, one of many clients from my employment beyond the wall. One of many clients? We spoke every night of our plans together, whispered songs of love into each other's ears, and then you upped and vanished without so much as a word. I left you a note, didn't I? I told you I was sorry, but that we could never be together, that I could never abandon my family. And I told you not to look for me. <sighs> How did you even find this place, anyway? The flame of your love was as a beacon in the night that guided me to you. Hervey. Uh, I was walking by the coast near Northreach when I saw a lady who looked like you. Eyes like the ocean. Hair like the driven snow. The next moment, she and her companions were jumping in a skiff and sailing out towards the wave. So I, uh, borrowed the nearest boat and started rowing. It must have been Shula bringing us here. So, so what? You rowed, found a nose how many leagues across the bay, simply because you saw a woman with white hair. And as I did, the skies changed from a dull and hopeless grey to a bright and benevolent blue. That was when I knew for certain that my little canary was close. Oh, why did you come? You should have forgotten me as I tried to forget you. I cannot leave my people, Hervey. And now that you know about this place, Neither can you. We must return to Haven and accept my family's judgment. I'm to meet your family. Oh, my little canary. <sighs> Please, come and see me later. You did as I asked and you must be rewarded for it. But first, Follow me, Hervey. Ah, to the end of the world and beyond. You should never have found this place. How could I be so careless? Don't blame yourself. I doubt anything could have kept that man away. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. You two met at the Vale, I take it. When I worked there, yes. To earn the coin that my people need to survive. Though Mysidia is our sanctuary, there are certain necessities that it cannot provide. And for that reason, some of us seek employment beyond the wall. Yet few are the opportunities for followers of a strange faith in a strange land. And so you supported your family as best you could? I did. And I have never regretted it for a moment. I found a second family in the Vale. And in the Dame, a second mother. I also found Hervey. But our love could never be... I knew that if I revealed my secret to him, I would be putting my people in danger. But that if I did not, I would be living a lie, unable to return home. What will happen to him now? <sighs> Since our people settled in Mesidia, uninvited visitors have been few and far between. 
but not unknown. Explorers, survivors of shipwrecks, none lasted long. I see. That was before my time, you understand. I've never had to make a decision like this before. Yamila, know that I do not blame you for any of this. It was me who decided to make the trip to shore. Me who exposed our secret. This was my mistake, and I shall bear the responsibility. Thank you, tributary. I only hope, I only beg you to remember that Hervé means us no ill will. He's just a fool. A fool who loves me. I will take that into consideration. But yours is not the only voice I must listen to. The whole family must be consulted. And it may take time for me to arrive at my decision. I hope you understand. Of course, tributary. However long it takes. Come what may, I thank you, my lord, for bringing us back together. I left Hervey because I couldn't turn my back on my family. And now his life hangs in the balance. I left Hervey because I couldn't turn my back on Greetings, stranger. What can I do for you? Your name is Blazir, is it not? Pavard tells me you're a friend of his father's, and that the two of you may have spent some time together prior to his illness. His illness? Talor's never been ill a day in his life. I don't know why he'd start now. Oh, Fennet doesn't know either. It was she who asked me to look into his recent behavior on the off chance it might explain how his condition arose. Oh, uh, I suppose there was. Something that struck me as a bit odd. He kept asking about the woods. Did you see anything strange on your way back from the shore? Are you certain? Do you swear? That kind of thing. I didn't, of course. But he wouldn't let it go. It was like he was expecting something to happen. It was just a matter of when. Not that I know what, but he never told me anyway. Well, that certainly does sound unusual. And it might just be what Fanet is looking for. Thank you. I don't mention it. Oh, and when you say to law, wish him the best from me, eh? Let's see what the healer makes of this. I can hardly believe it. To law of all people. Oh, I suppose we're both getting on a bit. I can hardly believe it. To law of all people. with word, but she couldn't tell me anything. Did you have any better luck? Nothing conclusive. But there was one thing. Blazir, the fisherman, told me that Talor had taken a sudden interest in the forest of late. He kept asking him if he'd seen anything unusual there on his way back from the coast, but never let on what exactly he was expecting him to have seen. The forest between here and the coast? Surely not. Then... But then... I can't say for sure, but I think Talor's illness might have some connection to the Tombreys. You may have encountered them during your time here. The small, scaly beastmen. And you think they may have caused Talor's illness? I do. At least in a way. And if I'm right, it's no wonder the treatments I've been trying didn't work. Oh, I know it's a lot to ask, but would you go down into Father's Fell for me? 
There's an altar there. And if my fears are true, an offering upon it. <sighs> what is going on here? Please. I'll explain everything when you return, but time flows fast. I beg you, make haste for Father's Fell and take the offering from the altar. Talor's life may depend on it. Very well. <coughs> <coughs> There's an old altar in the forests of Father's Fell where the Tombree sometimes congregate. If you leave now, it might not be too late. There's an old altar in the forests of Father's Fell where the Tombree sometimes things. Oh, after the fall of our ancestor's mother, Crystal, the, the moats of water wandered the twins for centuries. It wasn't until the binding of poor Wallius that we put down our roots here. Since that day, we've lived in hope that he might one day be set free, and, and our great-grandfather's wrongs made right. Oh, after the fall of our ancestor's mother, just... Before we turned east at the shipwrecks to reach the coast, now we must head in the opposite direction. Left it is, then. Beastmen is that they love to hide in the dark. What are they up to? Some sort of ritual. Sorry to disturb you. See what's on this altar then. A 
silver chain. I doubt the Tombrys made it. This must be what Fennet was talking about. You're back. Well, did you find anything? I did. This silver chain. I knew it. Well, I'm still none the wiser. Forgive me. This chain. It's a Gregorian Matanoster. Worn by men of the faith? What's it doing here? And why would the Tombrys be praying to it? To understand that, you need to understand what the Tombrys are. They feed on hatred and suffering. And some say that if you render them an offering, some token of grievance against your fellow man, they will put a curse upon him. So you think someone's put a Tombry curse on Talor? I can't say for sure. Truth be told, I always assumed it was an old wives' tale. But given his fear of the forest and the presence of the chain on the altar, I don't know what else to think. Does Talor have any enemies in the village? Anyone who would nurse such a grudge? No. No, I believe the one who left the chain at the altar was Talor himself. I beg your pardon? But there's more to the tale, you see. It's said that if you attempt to curse a soul that has returned to the sea already, your ire has nowhere to go but back to its source. You're saying he cursed himself? In trying to curse another, I. When my father was younger, he was one of the few permitted to venture beyond the wall on trading expeditions. He told us that when he journeyed to Sandbreck, He'd wear that chain to disguise his true beliefs, lest Grieger's faithful turn their cudgels on him. Did they ever catch him in his deception? Might that explain the ill will he bears someone? Not that he ever told me. Come now. Let's not waste time speculating about Talor's past. We need to focus on the present, and that means finding a way to break the curse. All right. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Thank you. I shall. Aye, and thanks for going to all this trouble. Here, it's not much, but I, I want you to have this. We call it an adder stone. It's a gatherer's charm. Reacts to certain rare minerals we use in crafting. Makes them ring out like a bell. Stuff you'd have no chance of spotting otherwise. If you find anything, see that you bring it back to me. I can make you some decent gear with it. If you're interested, like. I am, thank you. And I'll be sure to pay you a visit. Until then, I wish your father a swift recovery. What is it you want?
Till next time, then. Here's the can. But no sign of Nasef. To the riverbank, then.
I'm looking for a man named Nasef. Hi. I know him. Takes care of the cans. Wait. You didn't think I was him, did you? Sorry, mate. I'm just out to gym me sell a few Ibexes. What do you want with the lad, anyway? Uh, uh, his friend, Katav, asked me to look for him. Apparently he ventured out to work on one of these cans, and didn't return. Well, that is a worry. You're a hunter, yes? You must know the woods as well as anyone. Can you think where he might have gone? Uh, there's a bridge further down the path. Blasted thing got washed away a few moons back. Our carpenter only recently had time to rebuild it. But if I remember rightly, there is another cairn on the far side. Maybe he decided to visit that one while he was here. Maybe. It's worth a look, certainly. Thank you. Don't mention it. I'll keep an eye out, too. Perhaps he just got delayed or something. Let's hope so. Must be the bridge the hunter was talking about. Oh, thank you. Uh... I'm the tributary's guest. And you must be Nasef. I am? But how do you know that? Your friend Katav asked me to look for you when you didn't return. Ah... Uh, I'm sorry. I was so focused on attuning the cairn, I didn't see those creatures come until it was too late. How exactly do they work? Oh, that there are crystals inside. They're what keeps the glamour going. Should the ether cease to flow through too many of them, our shroud would quickly unravel. It's my job to make sure that doesn't happen. 
And an important job it is. But you'll struggle to do it if you're dead. You need to take more care. Yeah. No arguments there. The truth is, me and Katav usually work together, watching each other's backs like. But when we heard outsiders were coming, we split up to get the job done faster, so things would be perfect for your arrival. Stupid, I know. So you found him then? Not before the local fauna did. My arrival seemed to put them off their dinner. <laughs> Mustn't have been hungry after all. Expect you'll be wanting someone to escort you back to the village then, Nasef. Woods are full of nasties today. When you're next in Haven, be sure to come and see us. You saved my life. It's only right I repay you. If you insist. Take care now. I've lost you, but you saw to it that I was found. Thank you. Nasef told me everything. If you hadn't got there when you did... Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. All that matters is that you're safe. Far be it from me to tell you how to do your jobs, but... Don't go alone again. Or if we have to, maybe we should think about casting the glamour on ourselves to keep the wildlife from spotting us. It'd take its toll, of course, but it'd beat letting the cairns fall and having to weave the entire spell from scratch. Imagine if we had to do that. <laughs> I'd rather not. We'd only succeed in adding two new piles of stone to the collection. <laughs> Your bearers. That we are, thank the tides. The others can't attune to the crystals in the cairns the same way we can. I reckon this place would be doomed without us. <laughs> so, you do this work for the good of your people, not because... We're forced to. No. From what I've heard of the way things work on the outside, we were truly blessed that our rain fell here in Mesidia. Our people are few enough as it is. If we started turning on each other, kin against kin, over nothing but a stupid accident of birth. Our days would be numbered. They would. Anyway, all's well that ends well, eh? Thanks to you, both of us live to keep this place hidden another day. Lovely weather, isn't it? Another beautiful day under the glamour. The few crystals we can get hold of, we add to the cairns to keep the glamour from fading. And any left over we give to Pavart for his forge. Not that it stops him mourning. <laughs> the few crystals we... <laughs> Lovely weather, isn't it? Another beautiful day under the glamour. And what are you two drawing? Bastard things. When you've decided what you want, just let me know. Here we 
can use that. This is all we can peer. Anything else? Here we can use that. This is all we can peer. I'll be here.